Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So now the session is being recorded. So why why we are doing this web session? Okay, so as as part of the Pyro uh, project that I hope you have been hearing already a lot about it, the purpose is to ensure that we achieve 100% of physical counts this year, Anna, and if not, uh, to understand uh, why. So this session uh, will try to give you guidelines for the preparation and execution of the physical inventory, and also. We'll try to share some lessons learned from uh, the pyro project as well in, in real production uh, situations. So the idea is that uh, we will explain and you'll try to understand the steps to be performed before clearing. And this is something important because um, as part of accounting and controlling, you may need to you may need to uh, clear some differences. Okay, please remember to mute your microphone because I'm hearing some noise. Okay, so yeah, and then we have to understand first what are the steps that we need to perform if we find differences uh, that are already clear in warehouse management and not in IM as well. And and we will go through all, all these steps and we will also have some demonstrations. So what is the current situation in production? There are still a lot of uh, transfer orders that are pending to be confirmed. And this is something very important because uh, we'll see later in production. You have in your missions, I'm sure, a, go a good uh, number of transfer orders that are pending to be confirmed. And this is, a, this is a problem that you will see once we analyze the warehouse and all the storage types. Also, there are transfer requests that are pending to be processed and posting changes pending to to be processed. In other words, pending the TO creation, okay? And this situation makes very difficult the correct execution of the counting and controlling process. This is only for your, I mean, to give a bit of background, uh, what, why we are doing, what we are doing this. The agenda for today has um, basically four parts. We'll have a short introduction where I'm trying to, I will try to, uh, define the floor for everybody to understand what I will be explaining in the following um, part of the session. Then we will spend a bit of time on the preparation of the counting and controlling, which is finalizing uh, pending transactions before going to the counting and controlling. And uh, then we will go to the counting process and we will also review different troubleshooting scenarios. Okay, so th those are the, these are the four part of the session that we will go through today. So uh, before before starting, this is, uh, I'm sure this is very familiar to all of you, but I want to make sure that we, we, are, we understand the warehouse management structure and what is inventory management and what is warehouse warehouse management. Please remember to, to mute your microphone. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, right on the inventory management side, we have the plant and we have the storage location that identifies the stock in terms of ownership. And then we have the warehouse structure. In the warehouse structure, you have the warehouse code that will identify the warehouse. Then we have a storage type, and then a breakdown through storage section and storage bins, right? That are the bins are basically where we are going to have the, the materials. What is uh, very, very important for me to clarify at this moment is uh, that the concept of a storage type, please, can you please mute your microphone? Second, there is technical. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, mute your, yours, okay. Sorry uh, for this uh, technical, for the technical issues. Okay. So what I was trying to say is within the warehouse uh, structure, there is uh, something that you need to understand has to be crystal, crystal clear for you and is the concept of the storage type and particularly the interim storage types, okay? 
as uh, I was saying, and you are familiar with, you know, what is your warehouse, and then you have a different storage types, right, that is like grouped by, let's say, function or uh, yeah, type of material, and you may have engineering and medical furniture, safety and security, as you can see on the screen. And then you have within that storage sections, eventually you will have the bins. Now, for the system, there is an, an additional uh, list of storage types that are uh, for uh, purposes of, uh, let's say, keeping materials or keeping uh, stock that is either arriving to the warehouse or it's going to leave the warehouse. So we are going to issue them out or we are just receiving them. So they are interim uh, locations, I mean interim uh, locations where the system is uh, keeping track of these items before they are placed in the final bin. The list is, uh, they are coded from the number 900 to, 900 to 999, okay? But you can see on the screen, is a list of some of them. How these storage types work? For example, when we process or when inventory manager process a good receipt, in inventory, the elements come to storage type, for example, 902, okay? And then after we process the put away and we send in, we send the elements, uh, we send the items to a particular uh, more specific bin, they are removed from this storage type 902. Why I'm telling you this? Because later uh, during the session, I will explain how to uh, review and monitor these interim storage types. And if you find an amount here, which is different from zero, it means that the full end-to-end -end process has not been completed. In other words, if we have here in this 902, in this area, in this what we call interim storage uh, type 902, if you find 20 chairs here, it means that they will receive, but according to the system, they were never placed in a bin. So the system thinks that they were brought to the warehouse, but they are there in the entrance somewhere, waiting to be uh, placed in the in their final uh, location. Okay, so every code, every system storage type has a different purpose. For example, if you find a positive amount in this 902, it means what I'm telling you: we receive something and it's pending to be located. Is this uh, clear? Do you understand the concept for ex the example that I gave you about this interim storage type? They are like temporary, uh, let's say, locations for items that are arriving, for example, to the warehouse or they are willing or they are going to be issued, issued out. So when the items are in this temporary situation, they are tracked in these system storage types. If uh, you understand this uh, concept, it's like the entrance of the warehouse, you're putting them somewhere still pending to be located in the bins. Is this clear? Can you please click on the green check if if it makes sense, if you understand the concept of this system storage type that go from 900 to 999, those that are special ones? This is very important, right? If you don't understand this, I have to explain it for the next 10 minutes until it's more or less clear, because if you don't understand this later during the session, nothing will make sense. So 902 is one, so we receive something on 902, and then let's imagine that we do the TO, and once the TO is confirmed, we are moving the items to the final storage type and the, and the bin, all right. The same thing for other, uh, let's say, storage, uh, interim storage types. For example, if we take 911, okay, if we take 911, this is the storage, uh, the interim storage type for the elements that are issued out. For example, if someone is processing a good issue, it means that we are issuing materials out of the warehouse. But if no one is uh, processing the TO for picking in this storage type 911, we will have a negative amount. Why? Because we are issuing out elements, we are issuing out items out of the inventory. 
So if you come to this storage type and you find something, it means that the warehouse part is probably missing. So if you find a negative amount here, it means that probably the TO for picking has not been processed. So before um, starting the counting and controlling process, we need to review these storage types that are special that mean that if they have quantities, if they have uh, something different from zero, it means that in most of the cases, all the transactions have not been completed. So the system doesn't know if an element is in the bin or if an element was removed from the bin. Okay? Does this, uh, does this make sense? If you understand it and if you want to give me feedback, please go to the participants panel. So scroll, uh, go uh, with the mouse over the top bar, find the participant panel and click on the green check. If this is not clear or you want me to repeat something, please uh, write it on the chat or write it to Cyril because I'm assuming from this point on that you understand it. If I mention a storage type that will be between 900 and 999, you, will un you have to understand that we need to make sure that the transaction, that the uh, the quantity on this storage type is zero. Because if it's not zero, it means that there are transactions pending. Either the system doesn't know that you put it in the bin, or maybe you put it in the bin and you didn't uh, process the transaction, or you did it but you didn't confirm the transaction, etc. Is there any question about this here? No, so far, David, no question about this. More questions are related to the, the audio and connection. So you have a couple of people who cannot connect, but I'm, I'm working with them to make them to make them audio work. So good. Thank you so much. So I'm going to continue then. All right. And then remember, from time to time, I will come back to this uh, to this screen that I'm going to. I, I think I saved on a yeah. I have it somewhere here in my screen. So from time to time, I will come here to, to discuss with you some of the points. Okay, now what you have to understand, and especially warehouse users, because this is a session that is also oriented to warehouse users, you have to understand that all movements of a stock that are done at the inventory level, they, have, they must be followed by the corresponding transaction at the warehouse level. So the integration between inventory uh, IM inventory management and warehouse management implies that the good receipt must be followed by the put away transaction in the warehouse. But not only the put away transaction, but also the confirmation. And the good issue as well needs to follow, uh, be followed by the picking from the warehouse. This is, let's say, the most uh, general scenario. And then you also have a situation where you have a transfer, like uh, when we are changing the status of some stock from unrestricted to blocked or from blocked to unrestricted, or if there was a problem with the product ID of some material, you also change it. And it has to be uh, followed by the corresponding transaction in, in warehouse. This is very important. And it's not only the transaction, it also requires a confirmation. Because I've seen in production, there are a lot of TO that are pending confirmation. If the full end-to-end -end process is not completed, you will have uh, the warehouse from the SAP point of view uh, messed up because the, the system will not know what you have done on the warehouse, on the warehouse side. So how do we, will we, okay, okay, one second, again there is, there is noise, I think I'm going to do something to fix it, one second. Hello, anybody? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they should not be able to unmute themselves. Okay. 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 So I think that that's okay now. So now we're going to talk about the preparation before executing the counting and controlling. So, so what are the steps there? Right. 
there are six steps on this preparing phase. Then there would be four in the inventory count, and then some some extra ones for the cleaning of the differences. So from a high level point of view, okay, this is this should be the process. So we have to first identify the materials and the beans. Then we will uh, clear the materials in the interim storage types. So now you know what when we mention interim storage types are these, uh, let's say storage types so these uh, these areas of the warehouse where we have the the uh, the materials or the items that are pending to be to be placed or pending to be picked so we have uh, to close the trs process the tr which means basically creating the tos then close the posting change notices confirm tos okay and then we will go to the counting and controlling process so now during the first part of the session we are going to see we are going to see this, okay? the, let's say the preparation preparation part. Now, how do we how do we prepare for inventory? So just to bring you back to the agenda, we already went through the introduction. So now we we are going to we are going to see the preparing process. So again, we said that the first step will be to identify the materials and the beans that we want to count. Then we will review the staging storage types. Please don't, do not get confused with the terminology. You will see that uh, in some of the slides we are referring to this interim storage type or as staging, uh, as the same thing. Storage types between 900 and 999 are the ones that are considered as staging or, or interim. And those are the ones that I was uh, reviewing previously. So then we will go through the open TRs. Then we, we, I'm going to access the system and run the report for for this uh, scenario. So we will see together what is the situation in production and how to how to check if this is going if this is happening in your mission. So I will expect you to do the same thing after after the webex. And then we will also review the TOs that are pending confirmation, and we will see if there are previous um, inventory count documents uh, existing in the system. So let's go now. Let's go now to the let's say to the meat. So the first step that is recommended here is to identify the materials and the beans that we want to uh, account for. Okay. So in order to do, to do this, we have the T code LX02, okay? And then it's important to make sure that the beans that um, are subject to be counted are identified. Why? Because you may have, let's say, the material that you're looking for, you may have it in different, as you see in the screen on this picture, you may have this material on different uh, on different beans. And if you don't consider all, all the beans that have this material, the count may be, uh, might be a bit uh, misleading. So if you give me one second, I'm going to uh, go to the system to connect. So give me one one second. So um, before you go to the system, uh, David, I have a question from um, Yunmis. So they're asking the fact that many TR are open sometime in Duba uh, um, due to the fact that there's a delay in the shipment you know, uh, from from Juba to the main warehouse. So what could be a proposed solution, you know, to address that? So the scenario is uh, that you have, that, but that in that in that case, it's normal, right? So you the good receipt has been processed, but the TR is open because uh, really the goods, I mean, the goods are not yet in the warehouse, right? So the TO can be processed uh, to to identify where the items should go, but in any case, the TO will never be will never be confirmed until the items are placed in the in the bins. So this is basically a business situation. I don't know if Kirill if he's there, and we can unmute Kirill if he wants to add something. Can you unmute Kirill? Is he connected with the microphone? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, David and Cyril. Uh, uh, David, as you said, uh, the, uh, this appears to be the normal business process. So, obviously, once we process the good receipt, up until the goods are in the warehouse, we cannot really process, uh, make any counts. 
and that's why it's important to complete this um, put away to bin following the good receipt so that we minimize the time we have these transactions open. And as per the KPIs, we have 15 days to, to do that. All right. Thank you, Kirill. Thank you so much. So, and thank you for the question. The another one, David, maybe before you proceed, um, is about the difference between the 904, you know, code and the RT, RET rates, as both of them are returned. What is the difference between the two? I think the 904 beans and the RET. You mean? Yeah. yeah, we will we will see later uh, in a later slide all of them. I mean, all the most relevant ones. So the question was between 904, which is one number. Okay, we will see once we go to analyze uh, some of these elements, we can see. I'm I don't know. Uh, all the 900 uh, interim storage types, but the point is once you don't really need to know them by heart because once you start monitoring and you open the transactions and you open the storage types that are between 900 and 999, if there is a positive or a negative amount, you will see the transaction. So you can double click and see what type of transaction generated that, meaning that you don't need to, rem I mean, I'm just giving some examples with the most common ones, but the idea is that you have to monitor all of them before starting counting and controlling. And then if you have a positive or a negative amount, you will have a transaction that has generated that. And you can follow up and then see uh, why it's posted, it's posted there, all right? There are some of them that are related to internal orders, some others that are related, I mean, there are, it's, a, it's a long list, so we cannot, I don't even know the transaction that is posting and all of them, but I can tell you that you can do it the other way around. From the, uh, let's say from the point from the balance that you have in the storage type, you can go retrieve the transaction and understand what what is pending. So if you allow me now, we're going to the system, uh, where I'm going to jump to the system from time to time to do the, let's say, demonstration of, of what I'm explaining on the screen. So what we want to do now is to go to with LX02, which is a T code to identify the materials and, and the beans. So I hope you can see my screen. So I go with LX02. You should do you should do the same thing in production uh, for your mission, right? When you are preparing for the accounting and controlling. So I'm going to select uh, sim simply one of the warehouse from production. Don't pay attention to the mission. This is not not the relevant point and I'm going to run the report, okay? In this case, I think it's, it's Monusco. And, okay, so this is the warehouse. I think it's uh, from Goma something. This is the warehouse. I'm going to choose uh, a different layout that will give me basically what I want to see in the format, in the format that I want to see it. And for our example, I'm going to filter by, by a material, so, with let's imagine that we want to that we want to count for this part this particular material right so by filtering by material okay i'm filtering i selected the column material what i did was selecting the column material and then entering uh basically product d or material id i can see that this material is located in two different story locations in storage type 02 and 05 in two different bins. And this is um, basically a way of uh, analyzing where it is. And also important from this type of report, you can also see if there is in this column that is called IA, inventory active, is telling you if there is a uh, accounting process go ongoing for these for this bins at the moment, or for example, if this uh, bin has been counted in the last column. You see last inventory and inventory record, it means that for this bin, the last counting was processed in 8th of April, right? Uh, but, but for the bin above, uh, it was not counted, 
Okay. So this is the first report that uh, we are recommending in this session that you should be running, and we will come back from time to time to this one. It's good for you to identify what are the beans that you want to count for, basically, and the materials, right? And then from here, you can see uh, also the available stock. I didn't, maybe I didn't mention it. So here we see in this bin, we have five uh, items. In this other, in the bin C7B113, we have three of them, okay? So you can see it from the report. You can see the T code I'm using on the bottom of my screen, LX02. And then in this report, you can also see interesting information like if inventory is active or not, what was uh, the last inventory processed, the last inventory count, sorry, and what was the number of the record. So this is a very simple report indeed. What is important from here to keep in mind is the following. Let's imagine that you are running this report and when you see the, and you filter by, by the bin and then you see that it says here motor pump but you know that on that bin, what you have there is not motor pump, but it's a motor pipe, okay? So what would you do? What you should never do is to, let's say, write off or get rid on by the using counting and controlling or by other means, write off the existing material and then add the new one. If you expect to have here five motor pipes instead of five motor pumps, then you have to go through the process, which is basically informing Pyro and then follow on, follow that job bait that is very good and very detailed that is available on, on ISIC and all the all the job aids you can find them. Uh, and it's f uh, fixing the downstream issues, okay? So the idea is the following, as, in, as you can see on the, on my screen. If you find that the product ID does not match with the physical description, in other words, that what you see in this report, LX02, is not what you actually have, do not write off and increase the quantity of the current product ID, because if you do that, you will be generating expenditures also in finance, and then you will be, uh, let's say, creating false transactions. What you have to do is basically, uh, and eventually, do a transfer from material to material. So we want to change these elements from one material to another one, and for that there is a particular a particular process. Okay. From time to time on this uh, on this uh, session, we will tell you what you should not do because we have seen that uh, sometimes in production we have done this. So we want to reinforce what is not the process, and of course what is the what is the right the proper transaction. Okay, so next step is to review the interim storage type, the one that we mentioned before, from 900 to 999. Here in the, in the list, you have some of the, let's say, the most common staging storage type, the most common interim. But as I said at the beginning, if you find quantities under any of these, it means that either the transactions were not um, completed, meaning that probably the inventory management site, so they could receive the good issue, the MIGO was processed, but the transactions in warehouse were not confirmed, or maybe someone was very creative and, and processed some transaction as uh, we have recently seen some examples, and then was processing transactions uh, from the warehouse, uh, let's say, module without following the end-to-end -end process. This was also creating uh, some issues. so. Here you have the list, as I said, most of them by the description you understand what is the, what is the point, but in any case, if you find quantity, you can drill down and you can see uh, what created the problem. Let me show in, let's say in production, one example, okay? Let's see, if you do the same for your mission, you will be surprised. So if you, the T code now to review, the T code that we are recommending to review the storage types, that interim storage types, is LX03. Okay, this is the T code. And in this case, I'm going to run the report for a different 
for a different mission for a different warehouse. Again, it doesn't really matter what mission, you will do it for your own. And then I'm going to run this report, not for all the storage types, because what I want to see is the interim storage type. So I'm going to select storage type from 900 to 999. Is it clear what I'm doing right now? I'm selecting a warehouse and I'm selecting a storage type from 900 to 999. In other words, if we go to the presentation, what I'm asking is I want to see anything that is uh, it appears under these interim storage types because this has to go to zero in order for us to to do the counting and controlling process. Okay, so show me anything between 900 and 999 as storage as a storage uh, types. Okay. And then as a layout, I'm going to select one that one from Unifil that I, I like it. It's a good it's a good layout for us to see this, and I'm I'm going to run it. So you see, we have under storage time 902, we have a lot of elements. Okay, positive, negative, and then we have a lot of them also under different storage types 911, 902, etc. So if I filter, for example, by storage type 902, for example, if I select column type, I filter by 902, what I'm going to see. What I'm doing right now is to go to the system and ask the, ask the system, can you give me anything that you have under this storage type? 902, that is normally the one that is posted after good receipts, or uh, also is posted by common uh, put away TOs, because I'm expecting to see this um, as zero, right? So, in order to, to see this with the same code LX03, I was filtering by storage type 902. And all what we have here needs to be reviewed, basically. Okay, I will not get right now into details about uh, what is behind this uh, this amount. Okay, but let's say that typically you have positive amounts here is because the good receipt was processed and the TO for picking was not, and then some negative amounts here are related to other manual manual transactions. Same thing for another storage type, for example, 911. Sorry, no, 994, 911. Sorry, one second. Okay, we have we have the list. And again, if you have negative amounts, it can mean that uh, uh, you have the good issue process, but the TO for picking is not processed, uh, et cetera. And or different reasons. The point is that you need to review. You will need to review uh, pretty much uh, all of them and understand the reason behind this. Uh, let's say items in this interim storage uh, storage types. So before going to again, because I think there are some some comments from the chat. One second. Okay. So. As a second step, as a second step, the, we have to review storage types between 900 and 999. Okay, then you have the most common ones, and then some notes regarding this. Please, <clears throat> this is very important, and we we see already in production uh, users performing transactions between interim storage types. Do not move materials between interim storage types. If you have something that was the good receipt was processed, so it's sitting on nine or two because it's the, let's say the interim storage type, and you need to do good issue, you have to wait. You have to first do the put away, and then you will do the good issue. Do not try to go to find the shortcut by moving from nine or two to nine one one. Okay, users should complete and follow the logical sequence 
right, of W uh, of warehouse steps. So picking, put away, transfer, they have to follow the logical order. So the normal sequential process is you have the good receipt that creates the TR, then you have the TO to put away, and then you confirm it. So do not, please do not create manual TOs to move between storage types because then quality and I mean data will be inconsistent, right? Example, if you don't do the TR, the TO, then they are outstanding. If you do the manual thing, then when you process the proper, when you confirm the proper TO, you will have uh, a negative amount where you don't expect to see it. So in other words, do not issue out before the put away is processed. And if already this is done, do not fix it in a very creative way. Okay, pay attention to the transactions that are pending and process them. Okay, do not issue out from interim storage types. And again, we are saying, I, I know in this slide maybe I said four times the same thing, but because it's very important, okay? Always complete the put aways before picking, okay? Some of the scenarios that I'm showing right here, I was investigating, uh, I was taking a look with the help of Rafael and we realized that some of the problems that we, we, we can find in production are related to users performing uh, manual TOs between interim storage types. Is this, is this clear? Is this clear that you should not be doing that? What you have to do is to find out what is outstanding, what TRs are open, what TOs are not confirmed, what posting changes are pending, and finalize it, finalize them, okay? So another, another note about clearing storage types. Remember that when you do the good receipts in MIGO, the system plays them automatically, okay? And they have to be placed in a bin or on a bin before they are issued, okay? And as well, this is something that we also saw in production. Before the counting, another of these storage types are, is related to the to the count uh, to the quality inspection. For example, I think I can show it here. One second. I think it appears here. Quality. Okay, the list. Yeah, you have quality assurance. There are some storage types that are related to the stock that has to go through the quality inspection. So. Some of the amounts that you see in those storage types are related to quality inspection, so make sure the quality inspection is performed before you do the accounting, the accounting process. Okay. Basically, in order to do the accounting, you have to have the you you must have the interim storage type uh, clear. So there are for for different uh, amounts there. You have different reasons, and you have to get understand what transactions. Are, are pending, which is basically what the system is telling you, right? You have an amount in an interim storage type because you didn't complete process the process from from an from end to end. Okay, Cyril, any question before I go to the uh, TRs? Yes, uh, several questions. You know, um, I think it's good. The first thing is um, just qualification from Sega, and then it goes toward what you just say about the, the put away. You know, so ultimately at the end she put it in a different way. So put away should be done after the physical receipt, right? So and then you don't do the the transfer order from virtual receipt, right? So now uh, going back to the question. So the first question is uh, processing the TO for put away for virtual good receipts and placing them into BIM for the sake of clearing pending posting due to count or KPI, what are we going to, how, do, uh, how we are going to report on the count sheet, you know, that so goods are counted with quantity as received or you are going to report zero. So uh, pretty much, you know, to, respect, to repeat the question, when you process the TO for put away for virtual good receipt and then you place them in the bin, right? You know, in order to clear the posting, the pending postings, how are you going to report it on the count sheet? You know, you report, you report good in the count sheet as quantity, as receive, or you report it as uh, a zero? So, okay, I think this is similar to the previous question, and, and then maybe we can uh, let Kirill also reply. So the question is, is there is virtual good received? Okay, any spending posting, be, be okay because it's not yet in the 
in the bin, right? How is it going to be reported? So Kilo, what they are basically ask, asking is, I think it's similar to the question before. So if it's virtually received uh, on the quantity, it should appear as a zero because it's not in the bin. And also, thank you, Segam. We are going to give you a panelist uh, permission, so you want you can talk whenever you want. Kirill, do you want to expand on it? Yes, I mean, uh, I think um, Sega already touched um, slightly on this. Perhaps uh, she is in better position to elaborate on this question. Sega, are we here? Or oh, Manuela? No. I may not be here, Manuela. Okay. Anyway, the thing is that uh, you will not okay. get you until you have the the physical receipt, right? So yeah, I mean exactly. Uh, I was referring to what Sega put in the uh, as a response. But basically, yes, uh, we cannot uh, make transfer order and put goods into bin before they are physically received. So. To this regard, there should be no action for uh, goods that are in virtual receipt, not before they are physically received. Okay. okay. So no, no, let's take one more question and then you'll address the, the rest uh, later. So uh, in some cases, there is no pending in LB10 and LT23. However, there are some material in 902 and 911. Why this happened and how do you reconcile it? Yeah, this is basically something that has to go uh, case by case, right? So, as a, as a good start, what uh, I mentioned before, running from this, uh, from this, actually, let me let me go to the system just to give you an idea of what could be the the process. So, for example, if you find uh, something a negative one here in this report, LX03, uh, okay. And then you go. You can go and see what happened. Right? So you can see, for example, this uh, 220. You can see the document number here, and also the good receipt. And you have to investigate based on the material. So we cannot give you, for example, in this case that I see a negative amount. Right? I can see the TO that created the adjustment. So there is not a particular reason. I think what a particular process, okay? It's good that you don't have pending uh, TRs and it's good that you don't have pending TOs, but if still you see negative amount, okay? You have to go and investigate case by case. And I would recommend you to do it taking the material, uh, the product ID, the material ID, and then go for example, with MB51 to see what material documents have been processed against your warehouse and also filter TOs by the material ID and then you will have an, an idea of what is pending and what created the negative, the negative amount. Now, the, pur the purpose of this session is to explain how to monitor and it's not so much oriented to troubleshoot. But if you find that, you can always uh, open a ticket, refer to the pirate team, also to the our uh, tier uh, 2A support in Brindisi, and they will help you to troubleshoot the situation, which is very good already that you identify problems and then you uh, communicate that with the tools that you have, you still don't know how to solve it. And then we, it has to be taken case by case, uh, basically. All right? But uh, as a hint, what I can tell you is you, from this list, if you see the negative amount and you want to understand, you can double click on the material. Then you will open, you display the quant, and this quant will give you the transactions that have an, had an impact. So from here, you can drill down and see what transaction created this negative amount and then try to understand. It's not so easy to investigate. Huh? I can tell you that sometimes you can spend maybe one hour to, to know what is, the, what is the issue. All right. So... Let me continue then. Let me just uh, recap a bit what we have seen. We are now, look, we are on the preparation part for the counting and controlling process. We checked the list of uh, beans and materials. 
then we have we have taken a look to the interim storage types that have positive or negative amount and then from there we will need to investigate and then we we'll give you we, we gave you some hints about what to avoid not to create additional problems when trying to fix the things okay so what else now uh, as I was saying before most of these let's let me just give a rough estimation I don't know maybe 70 percent of the issues that you have are or, or even more are related to pending transactions are related to transactions that were processed in inventory management that were not proce uh, processed in warehouse. So how are we going to see that? The first, one of the first steps is to review open transfer requirements. When the good issue, or when, sorry, when the good receipt is processed or the good uh, issue is processed in inventory management, when do we process MIGO with a movement type, the system automatically creates an impact in the warehouse management. And that creates also a transfer requirement that is pending to be pending to be processed. So how do we see what is pending? We go to the system, now it's a different code, now it's LB10. Okay. And we want to see um, for a particular warehouse. And then in this case I'm going to select a particular layout from Fabio, I'm, I, I guess this is Fabio Meboli, that has a, a particular layout here, and then we will display pending uh, TRs. So with this T-code, LB10, we can see transfer requirements that are pending to be processed. How do we process a transfer requirement? By creating the corresponding TO. If you have transfer required requirements pending, this any any of this line means that in the storage type, in the interim storage type, you have an amount pending. For example, this TR has something pending in the storage type 902, a positive amount probably. This is this TR that are related to the good issue have negative amounts in this interim storage type 911. So by processing these uh, TRs, by creating the TRs, by creating the TOs uh, out of the TRs, you are already clearing the storage, uh, the interim storage type that we were mentioning before. You see here, there are pending TRs from November, December, okay? So there are a lot of them that are pending. Okay, and this is something that is happening probably uh, to all the missions, or if this mission has something it's for a particular reason, I'm not uh, trying to point to anything. And just saying that before going to the counting and controlling process, you have to make sure that you don't have all uh, TR spending, unless as, uh, we have one of these scenarios that uh, Kirill and Sega were pointing out about materials that were received virtually, but are not there uh, physically yet. Okay, LB10, it's another one, okay, and uh, let me go one, I think one step beyond. Yeah. So with this report, you can see open transfer requirements, and then some, some notes, okay? Remember that the system is linked to, is designed, sorry, to link inventory management and warehouse management transactions. So please, this is another typical mistake. People like to monitor the situation of their interim storage types, and sometimes they create manual ETOs to fix the thing, to fix the problems. Please do not create manual TOs because that leaves open TRs, and we don't want open TRs. You have to go with LB10, see what is there pending, and then process the TOs link to the TR. You can do it by selecting and then process TO in foreground, or you can do it with LT06, right? As we are saying and using the link to the material document. It's very important. If you don't process the TRs and you try to be creative by using uh, creating manual TOs, you, instead of resolving one issue, you create another issue, and then you have two issues. Okay, and then investigating and finding out what went, what, ha what happened, takes time. So, as a, let's say, golden rule, 
go to open TRs, process them, and then review again interim storage types, and then see what needs to be fixed manually. I like to say, before even analyzing in very in in deep in depth uh, the interim storage types, make sure that there are no pending TRs, there are no TOs pending confirmation, and there are no posting changes notice that are outstanding. All right, because this will have an impact on the on the interim storage types. Similar to TRs, okay. Similar to TRs, we have the what is called posting change notice. I know this title from SAP doesn't help much to understand, but uh, in order to explain it in a simple way, I'm going to the system. Okay. Now the T code is different. Before we were checking tra transfer requirements. Now we're checking what is called posting change notice. What is the posting change? What is the posting change notice? It's similar to the uh, transfer requirement, but instead of being created by a normal uh, good receipt or good issue, in this case, this is performed by a transaction in uh, inventory management that is changing somehow an existing material. Maybe because you're changing the status of the item or because you're changing the product ID, etc. Okay, and this generates in the system in warehouse side another transaction that is pending to be processed. How do we check these pending uh, transactions? So this time is not LB10. What is the transaction? Is there written in the presentation? LU04. LU04, we specify your warehouse. And then we can say that it's open or partially completed. We can simply now for this demonstration, we can show only open. These transactions are pending, okay? Maybe from March, right? If you want to know what it's about, as, as I said before, you can double click and you will see the posting change. For example, we see in production, this is the list of pending. Some of them are from March, okay? If this is here pending, it means that there is an interim storage type that has some amounts that are pending as well. Let's take the first example from 22nd March. I hope you are following me, okay? I double click on it. And there was here a transaction that was trans uh, changing the material of some elements from the material 1566901 to another material number. And this created transactions in the storage type, I mean, impacted the storage type 9 to 2. So if we go with the TICO we went before to see the interim storage type, we will see some amounts that we don't understand that are created by this posting change notice. Okay? So if we go and check 9 to 2, we will probably see an amount of 29 that is there. How to clear it? By processing pending transactions, look, if you process the transactions in the way the system is designed, apart from some very, very particular business exceptions, you will not have a lot of, lot of things on your interim storage types. They are there to let you know that, you did, that uh, in the system not all the transactions were were processed. Okay, is this uh, is this clear? LU04. Let me just recap one moment. Just this is also for your information. What type of transaction generate uh, posting chain notices? You have changes in the status of the material, like if you move from unrestricted to blocked, or from material to material. Remember that after GDP we had some a period where uh, for the migration that came from Galileo there were some material that. Uh, had to be changed, so this created also these transactions in the system. Is there any questions here? Uh, yes, you have several questions uh, uh, right now. So I think I will pick them, you know, uh, based on, on the topic you're currently addressing right now. And uh, as I said to everyone, I'm receiving those questions, I'm compiling them. So if you don't address your question right away, right now, no, don't worry. You know, you will do it, you know, either later during this session or through the question and answer. So, 
um, I have a question. What is the difference between put away and picking, and in which transaction you run them? For example, I think I assume this is a particular T code, so you can share the T code later. I will send the video. Okay, okay. That that is a uh, it's, it's a good question, and it's it's very very good that uh, the people are asking that question. So this slide, the TO for picking is a transfer order that is used to put the item that we are receiving, sorry, the, the TO for put away, right? So they were asking put away between picking, right? Between, I mean, different between put away, exactly. So put away will take uh, the items and in the system will place them in a bin. So the normal sequence is we receive, we have a good receipt, and then the amount appears under storage type 902, for example. And then by doing the put away, what we are doing is to take the elements and we tell the system we are placing them in this bin. If you don't do the transfer order for put away and it is confirmed, so it's created by the warehouse senior user and it is confirmed, the system will not know in what bin they are. So for the system, they are still in the entry point, which was storage type 902. So put away is placing the elements in the bin, basically. Picking is similar, but instead of putting them in the bin, you are removing them from the bin. So if there is a good issue on the inventory side and we want to deliver some uh, materials, to the SAU, for example, there will be a good issue done by the inventory manager. Now, the action to take the elements, the items from the bin in order to deliver them, it's the TO for picking. It's called for picking because you pick it from the, from the bin, okay? And the impact in the system is if you don't confirm the TOs for picking, you will have some amounts in the storage types 911, I mean 911, 912, etc. 914. If it was to internal order, okay. Yes, uh, thank you, David. Maybe you will take another one, you know, before you continue for uh, the second. So, I think is it possible to carry out physical count of inventory of uh, certain, you know, uh, uh, product ID, PID. Let's say if you have two product ID out of 15, you know, um, product ID in the bins, you know, how you gonna, how you gonna provide, how you gonna carry out the physical count? There's any particular T code or, or guidance to, uh, to do that? I think yes, the T code maybe or guidance. I'm not sure. Yeah, we will. That 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 question we will also address it once we go to the second part of the session. Well, we will review the counting and controlling process. So once you initiate the count, you will, the system will give you the let's say the material that that you have in the bin, and then in the system you can enter the amounts by by product ID. So I think from the system point of view, uh, there is not a problem now. Uh, business process wise, we will we may discuss it in the second part of the session, right? Because uh, right now, if you remember, if I take the agenda again, we are, at this moment, we are discussing the preparation phase. So we will go to the counting, and, and I understand the question comes from some probably production situation. So just uh, in order to finish this section, this, this part of the session, and then we will go for the coffee break because I can see some of you already tired. <laughs> uh, what I was saying is, uh, is the last uh, slide was about the pending or open posting change notices. Okay, so we went with the T code LU04, right? And we saw some of them that are pending. So some some extra points or let's say notes for you. Always when you have uh, amounts pending or transactions pending is because a transaction typically has been done in the inventory and it's not, the, the related transaction has not been processed in the warehouse. So for the posting chain notices, you have these typical uh, movement types. If you are inventory managers, 
you will be familiar with them. If you not, just consider that some transactions on the inventory side will impact your work as warehouse uh, users. So if in inventory side they process uh, MIGO with this movement type for transfer of uh, stock between locations or transfer of material or materials or changes of status of the materials, then in the warehouse you, they need to process basically the TO because there will be a posting change notice uh, waiting and then we have to they have to create the TO that typically should be done uh, from the T code LT06 that is the T code to create a TO and you will have to include a reference to the material document that was created from from MIGO and also there could be uh, you can do it probably from the from the report but uh, yeah I think for this session is enough if you understand that if you find uh, amounts in the st interim storage types, there are pending transactions. If there are pending transactions, you have some codes to go and see what is pending. And then normally the part that is pending is either the creation of the TO or the confirmation of the of the TO. Okay, I think this is another note, but it's similar to the one before. If you know there are amounts pending because you realize by checking the interim storage type, please do not create manual transfer orders. And here, this is a very painful point because if you don't have uh, experience at all in the system and you don't understand what is this interim storage type, you don't do anything and everything is accumulated. But if you know a bit and you go and monitor the interim storage types, you may feel like the idea of creating manual TOs to clean it up. But if you do it manually without linking to the posting changes, you will create another another problem. Okay? So as I was saying, if you run the report and you find the posting change, you can uh, do it with LT06 or you can do it directly directly from from the list. Okay? You can run the report, take and then create the transfer order. Okay? And this is also I think a very good uh, a very good recommendation because LT06 is something that you do uh like a standalone, you go you find if you have the material document you can do it. But if you go run you run the report that I showed before and you see that there are pending uh, posting changes, you can just take it from there and, and run it. So it's like a workflow, right? You have uh, transactions pending, you complete them, and, and that's it. Okay? Now, since I've been talking for one hour already and you are listening to me, but I'm not sure if you are paying attention anymore. Okay, I'm going to activate now a polling. So I'm going to send you some questions that you will receive automatically in your WebEx account and I'm expecting you to, to connect. You see now when I, when I say that I'm going to send questions, I see a lot of people going back to our screen, right? So I can see that the attention rate is increasing. So I'm going to activate uh, a polling, a polling questions. Um, give me just one second. Let me, so the question four, because some of you have missed it, so please, uh, uh, pay, pay attention to the question four from the polling was when converting materials from block stock to unrestricted stock what happens there no so the right answer is a MIGO transaction should be performed followed by a TO LT06 reference in the posting change notice why because as I said before in the previous slides when you have the MIGO transaction, when you have to do move something from uh, changing the status, not from block to unrestricted or vice versa, you will have a transaction with this movement type, a MIGO transaction with the movement type. And then it has to be followed by the creation of the TO with a reference to the posting change notice. And this is a typical example that you, where you should not do, you should not do the manual Right? You should not do the manual uh, transaction, the manual TO, because then the posting chain notice will be outstanding. 
and eventually if you clear it, it will create a negative amount in the in an interim storage type that you don't want to to have it for the counting. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Cyril, there was a question about um, serial numbers in warehouse, right? Yes, correct. So, so is it possible to run a report? So, one uh, um, a participant wants to know if it's possible to run a report for equipment serials uh, in a specific bin. Okay, can you hear me now? Sorry, because I'm not sure I was talking on the with the microphone. Yeah, there was a question about if it's possible to know uh, serial numbers that are placed in particular bins. Unfortunately, uh, right now, warehouse management solution by itself is not managing serial numbers at bin level. Okay, there is an option that SAP provides but has not been implemented uh, implemented yet. So the answer is is no. Uh, the warehouse level. You have the material, but you don't have, uh, let's say, in these reports, the serial number at the level of the bin. So you don't know what bin you have a particular, a particular serial number. Okay, I'm going to continue. Sorry, because we are receiving a lot of questions and we cannot address them all of them uh, during the session. But uh, yeah, we will uh, gather them and then through the business we will we will share them with the business and then hopefully we will send you with the material. So let me just recap. Uh, maybe we, we in a, maybe, uh, in a, yeah. David, you can uh, uh, maybe um, share the answer for the uh, the polling again. Recap for the polling or the question. Yeah, good yeah, good, good point, Cyril. Okay, so from the polling, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good thing actually because I have the information but you you don't see it. So the first question was the main purpose of this web it was the preparation for the physical inventory count, etc. The answer was obviously that the purpose was to understand how to ensure that all movements of stock at the uh, inventory at the, all the uh, understand how uh, to ensure that all movements of stock performed at the inventory level must be followed by the corresponding warehouse transaction before performing the physical inventory count right uh, I've, I've said that one million times already inventory management transactions MIGO type of thing tra uh, transactions have to be followed by the transaction in warehouse management, including confirmation. Second question from the pooling was to what uh, were the main transactions reviewed during the preparation of the physical inventory count? And the right answer was clear storage uh, types from 900 to 999, process open TRs, good receive good issue and transfers, and posting change in notice, and confirm open TOs. Their question was, uh, open transfer requirements can be closed by creating manual transfer orders, LT01, and this is false, right? You, do, you don't have to, uh, you, you should not create manual uh, transfer orders, except for bin to bin transfer uh, maybe, but definitely not to process transfer requirements. If you have a transfer requirement, you have to go with LT06 and create it linked to the material document or linked to the to the TF. And last one, we already discussed it, huh? that uh, question four, when converting material from block store, then the MIGO transaction should be followed by LT06 with a reference to the posting change notice. Okay, so coming back to the presentation, Sorry for this uh, unexpected uh, pooling, but it's good for us to, let's say, break the dynamic and also to to pay to help you pay attention. Let me let me go back to the agenda and to see where we were. All right, so we are on the preparing phase. Okay, and am I sharing the screen? Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm going to share the screen now. Thank you, Cyril. All right, I'm sharing the screen now. Thank you because sometimes uh, I don't realize. Okay, we are recording as well. 
So going back to the agenda, we are on the preparation uh, phase and uh, we identify materials and being, we check storage types, we review open TRs and then we want to, uh, we reviewed already posting change notices as well. And now we have to basically see what are the TOs pending confirmation. Now, <clears throat> please, I would like you to pay attention to this moment because you cannot imagine the number of TOs in production that are pending confirmation. So if you go and see your interim storage type and are full of stuff, I can tell you this will reduce drastically if you go and check your TO that I'm pending confirmation. I'm going to production now. I'm going to run this, this report that uh, is, uh, one second, I go to the right slide so I will show it to you. Yeah, we are here. So, in order to see TO spending confirmation, you have to go with the T code LT23. All right, this is to warehouse users as well. And this report will show you the TO that are have been created but are pending closure by the warehouse user. So what is the, the workflow here? The warehouse senior user normally creates the transfer order and uh, indicating to which, what bin the item should go. But after the warehouse, after the uh, element or the item has been placed in the bin, is the warehouse user who has to confirm the transfer order. It's like saying we already placed the items in the right bin. If we don't do that, the TO will not have an impact in the system. All right? So, uh, yeah, this is basically what the transaction said. So how does this look in the system? Now, warehouse users, please open your eyes. Pay attention to what I'm going to show right now. The T code is LT23. I'm going to run it for a particular warehouse, okay? Doesn't matter what warehouse it is. The point is the following. I'm going to select a layout. This is only a way of displaying the elements, okay? Don't get don't get confused with this. This is only to, to display the, the, the table. Kirill, please, uh, you want to add something or correct me? So, no, no, let me, hello? Yeah, Kirill, maybe before you address, let me just take the opportunity to uh, share with, uh, with you and everyone the question uh, that was asked by one participant. So, according to the CW operation manual, you know, section D 4.7, you know, paragraph 163, the, the section says, all adjustment must have a reason code of the inventory adjustment submitted in the Emoja remark column. Where can the remark column can be found? So, what will be the reason code for the inventory adjustment? If you have a remark, where can did it find in uh, in in Emoja? Uh, Kirill, maybe you can share more light on this. Uh, I was wondering if, uh, hello? Yeah, I was wondering if David may show this in the system. Uh, yeah, I will I'm respond um, separately after the session. Okay. Okay, yes, because the other question was about the inventory adjustment. So my, my point, if you, okay, then if you don't mind, I will continue. Because this point is very important, especially for most of the audience that we have are warehouse users. Yeah, so, and, and then on the colon part, you know, after a David could look at the colon and show exactly where the, you can put the reason for inventory adjustment. Right. So, uh, what I wanted to say here is how to monitor for you in your mission. Warehouse users, please pay attention. How to see TOs that are pending confirmation. Probably you already placed the items in the bins, but maybe you did not confirm the TO. The problem is that the system doesn't know where the items are. 
and think that everything is in the interim storage type. Therefore, you cannot proceed the, with the counting process. So how do you do it? Very simple. You go to SAP Umoja. The T code is LT23. Very simple. LT23. Where you specify only the warehouse number and the layout. I mean, the layout is, you don't even need it, right? That, this is, I'm doing it to show it in a beautiful way. So you enter your warehouse and you're telling the system, please show me open TOs. And you run the report. Imagine the number of TOs that in this warehouse are pending. All these transactions pending mean amounts in interim storage type spending. So if you see the TO, it says from 02 to 914, it's because this is pending, this is pending, all this is pending. So let me take, if I may, a very simple, a very simple example. Let me filter by material, just for you to get an idea. Okay? I'm going to take one material, whatever. Maybe this one. If I filter by material, if you're paying attention, I, you can see three transfer orders that are pending confirmation. They are from 4th March, 28th March, 8th of April. These TOs were processed to move items, right, from the storage type 3 to 914. 22 elements, 40 and 4. So you have three transfer orders that are pending uh, confirmation. What is the effect in the system? Let me open another another screen and we'll show you the T code that we show at the beginning, LX02. Okay? I'm going to run the same report we did at the beginning and I'm going to filter by this material. So you see what is the impact of your outstanding TOs. Okay, look, there are three TOs pending. Not only three, I just applied the filter, right? To see this paint, oil, whatever. I, I don't even know what it is. this is, paint, something. So you have three TOs on this material, only on this material, three TOs pending. Now I go to the, re to the other report that this shows me the, all the warehouse uh, stock by material, and I'm going to filter by the same material. The same material, one, five, three, four, one, zero. Look what you have here, okay? Storage type 914, minus 22. Storage type 914, minus four. Storage type 914, minus 40. So you cannot count this material because you have negative amounts in interim storage types. Why do you have interim, uh, why do you have materials in these interim storage types? Because these TOs are not confirmed. These TOs of 22 will move from 03 to 914. Basically, this TO will move from this uh, bin where you have 8,000 elements to this one. And this 22 will disappear. And this 4 will disappear. And this 40 will disappear. In other words, you have negative quantities in interim storage types, which we don't like. It's not that I don't like it. Should, we don't want them before the counting and control is processed. So if you remember what I said at the beginning, you have your interim storage types. And in interim storage type 914, you have negative amounts. Let me filter this by 914 so you see it more clearly. You have negative amounts here. And we said we don't want negative amounts here or positive amounts here. We want zero. Why do you have here minus 22, minus 4, minus 40? Because there are TOs that are not confirmed. And this is only a small portion. I was showing to you a long list, a very long list, a very long list of TO spending confirmation, a very long one. And this is only in this warehouse. I'm sure this is not the only warehouse that has lots of TO spending confirmation. 
and this requires action from the warehouse user. And this is one of the purposes of this session. Is this clear? Can you please click on the green check if this is clear? You have to go with LT23 and make sure the, T the TOs are confirmed. Please, if this is clear, click on the green check. If you want me to repeat again how to display this, just let me know. I know it's very basic, but still, I can tell you we need to reinforce this message. Okay. All right, thank you. So I think this is the last step of the preparation. Let me just uh, verify. Yeah, open TOs. It's the last point of the of the preparation, but I tell you, you can't even start from here because it's pending, right? So before going into details and analyzing so much the interim storage types, make sure that you don't have pending transactions because that has an impact, no? All right, and uh, okay. There is a last step that I think we're going to show after the break, which is the review of physical inventory, inventory dogs. Okay, let me do it very quickly because then we can go for, for the coffee break. Uh, LX22, if I'm not wrong, yeah, LX22. And it's basically a, a transaction in the system that will tell you if there are counting uh, documents ongoing. So before you start the counting, you also want to make sure that there is another, there is not another one pending. So you select the warehouse, you say, show me any counting document that is not counting or partially counted, okay? Because all the counting documents have to be clear. So when we start the counting, we have to finalize it. And then for example, for this mission, I can see that there are three of them that are pending. One is, uh, two are active and one is inactive. And basically if, if these missions are being MINUSCA in this, in this case wants to initiate uh, counting for, for these beams, right? Uh, they have to delete the existing one or complete it. Okay, because you know when the counting starts is blocking the is blocking the beam. Uh, okay, before going to the coffee break, okay, I think there is uh, we continue. We still have to process to create the other forecast. Okay, we, now in the coffee break, I think I will review the questions, maybe, uh, and then we'll see what 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 apply uh, well for the for the session. So before going to the coffee break, sorry to play with your <laughs> to to say so many times that you're going on break and not let not letting you go yet, but uh, there are some troubleshooting scenarios that I want to mention, so you can think about them on the on the break. So upgrading storage types, and this is for your reference. We will mention it briefly, and, and again, the purpose of this session is not to make you, uh, let's say, professional troubleshooters, but at least to give you a hint and, and to get an idea of how to, how to go through this. About clearing storage types, sometimes you find that there are uh, differences. There are like negative amounts in the storage type 999. Storage type 999 is a special one that is used for different purposes. One of them is to clear differences. Another one is related to the right of process uh, scrap when the when the uh, disposal method is scrapping. So if you find negative amounts in the storage type 999 with storage bin name called scrap, Basically, as usual, it's because not all the transactions were processed, okay? So how to clear these quantities? So we are giving you in this presentation uh, like a summary of how is this uh, process? What is the, the full process uh, for the right of from the warehouse management point of view? And this particular one requires the creation of, of the TO after the MIGO is a process. I don't have time to get into detail right now on all the steps, but bottom line is the same one. You have an amount in an interim storage type. Why? Because some transactions, as you can see on the screen, were performed on the inventory side and some transactions are pending on the warehouse side. What you have to do is to go to that storage type, open the transaction, that is giving you information from the inventory transaction, think about the process and proceed with the warehouse side, right? In this case, we're talking about uh, scrapping, 
but uh, yeah, the logic to follow is, is the same one. Okay, I don't want to give you much more details about this. You have it in, as a reference material. Okay, and then another example, the items that cannot be reversed, that was another, a reserved, sorry, no reverse, <laughs> cannot be reserved. Why? Because the system is telling us that there is no stock available. Why is not the stock available? Again, it's the same, the same situation. The transactions, well, this is with you, for your reference, transactions were performed at the inventory level, but not at the warehouse level, right? So if there was a good issue, if there was a good issue, but then the picking was not processed, you may find items in the bin that, let's say in the system, but telling you that they are in the bin, but then on the inventory side, they are not there. So all the troubleshooting case by case has to be analyzed, but the reason in the background typically is transactions were processed in the inventory side, but not in the warehouse. And now we have to investigate what what is, is pending. Another example, we were trying to convert material from block store to, to unrestricted stock, but uh, yeah, they could not do it because the good issue uh, could not be executed because the items were in block status. Again, the, pros the solution is to run MIGO with uh, movement type 343, then to process the, the TO because the system creates automatically the material document and the, and the TR. Okay, I think, yeah, and then again, coming back to the same point in a nutshell, we are not processing the warehouse part after processing the inventory, and then we have a piece, uh, posting change notice pending, okay? I know I went very maybe too fast uh, through the troubleshooting, okay, but this is not particular, this is for your reference, and then once you have the the problem, we have to go through through the scenario and basically understand and assess what caused the problem. So do you want to add something or or we can do a short break? Uh, no, just before the short break, uh, just want to show you, uh, you know, all the questions are collected. So maybe before starting back after the break, we're going to address, you know, a couple of, couple of them, right? So we can have an answer as we are, you know, uh, proceeding. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much. We I'm reducing the break from 15 to 10 minutes because I know you need to to rest, but we don't have maybe so much time. So please come back in 10 minutes. I will I will set up a, a countdown uh, with Sherry so you see every mo in every moment how much time you you have. But I think we need to have a break before going to the counting process itself. Okay. Thank you. Uh, see you in in 10 minutes. So counting and clearing differences. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, the objective is, I mean, this is basically a summary of the points that we want to see. We will explain how to create a physical inventory document, how to print the document, how to execute the inventory count, entering the result. I mean, executing the inventory count is not done in Moja, so it's, it's about counting physically. Then we will review how to enter the results and then uh, initiating the, the recount. In later, very important, we will show how to perform the adjustments in WH and warehouse management and also in inventory. All right, so this is the view of a high level view of the process. Okay, we will, the first point that you see in green is basically what we did before the break. Then we are going to create the physical inventory document, then enter the results and then we may need to do the recount or to clear differences. And this is what we are going to do. This is just for you to have an idea of the process we are going to follow. What you see in blue is performed in Moja. What you see, the step that you see in white is performed out of the system. Sorry, because I'm, I'm losing a bit my voice. Okay, so let's continue. So what to count and how to count. 
this is uh, just uh, some slides for information and to remind you what what is the process about from the business point of view. So the process begins with the generation of the physical inventory document. What you see that is called physical inventory document is something that the system needs to start entering for you to start entering the accounting. Okay, and then against the you will have to select some bins that you will use for the account. So the physical account is basically quant counting the content of the selection of, of a selection of bins. And how to count? The bins will be freeze. This is something important because if you start accounting and then you don't complete it and you don't clear it, the bin uh, will get uh, locked. Okay. And uh, okay. the first step is the creation of the inventory. I mean, before doing that, we normally should go and see with LX02. Again, what are the beans that we want to cover, but this is something we explained right before the, the coffee break. And now we're going to create uh, the counting, the inventory count document. Okay, I'm going to do it in the system. I think it's better. So if you want to to take a look to our screen now, because I see a lot of people that are not even uh, looking at the WebEx screen. So please uh, come back to us because we are going to, to do small demo. I'm going now to the training environment. So if you give me one second, I will go to the training environment. Please do not take note of my password. So I'm going to the training environment and I'm going to perform uh, briefly the counting process. So if you're not familiar with it, you will see how to do it. And then we can, we can discuss a bit about, about the steps. Okay. All right, so the TCO to create the inventory, the first step that is the creation of the inventory document is LE01N. This is already in the presentation, as you can see. And what we are going to do here is to select the warehouse number. In my case, I'm going to do it for Monusco. Storage type. So in our scenario, in my case, I'm going to do it for storage type 01. And in order to create the inventory document, I have to enter here a selection of bins. So for my scenario, I'm going to do it only for one bin, but someone was asking, is it possible to do it for multiple bins even if they have different materials? Yeah, yeah no, I, th I don't think there is a problem from the system point of view. This would be the name of the code of my bin, and yeah, you have to enter here the name of the counter. What I'm doing here is to create a, trans a document in the system that is used later to enter the count. So I press enter, I'm going to do it only for, for this bin, then I select the, the bin, let's say, and I click on activate. So now the system has created, if you see the message on the bottom of my screen, the system has created an inventory number, an inventory count number, which is 1242. Two. So I'm taking note of it. One second. I'm writing it down. Okay. There I, there I go. So now I go to the to the presentation again. This is the first step, right? It's very simple. I have created the physical inventory document for the count. You have the step there. Also, you have we will send to you the in the the job with the user guide with all the steps. Um, yeah, and we have to print the physical inventory document. Why? Because then uh, someone, I think, it's the warehouse user, will go and count for every material the the number of units that we have there. How do we print it? The T code is LI04. So just for you to see it in the system, if you are facing problems, the T code is LI04. 
we have to specify the warehouse. The inventory record I just created is populated there is 1242. Printer, this is important, it's a bit technical, but we have to say in the printer LOCL, which is local printer, because we want to, uh, let's say, print it on our machine. And then I will check print immediately so we don't wait. All right? That's it. I think that's it. I press enter, and the system will take a bit of time to generate the printing. This is what in the presentation I'm also, I'm also I think, explaining. Okay, once we create the inventory document, we print it. You have the screenshots in the presentation, but I do it in the system because I think it's, it's a bit better. Now the system takes a bit of time, okay, and eventually it's going to create this. Let me show to you the document that I just created before the session. So it's creating basically a document that is ready to be printed and it will use, be used by, uh, by the warehouse user or the responsible person to, to count. Okay. In this scenario, for the bin that I have selected, notice that there are two different materials. Right? There was a question from someone about this. We have uh, new spurs that are with this material ID and we have the other one. You see the system already finalized creating the printing document and I have it here to be printed and safe. I will not do it now because I already have it. Okay, and then we'll have to specify and fulfill everything according to the process. This is the document that has to be fulfilled out of the system. Okay, and then this is another list of, in case you see another machine. I think this, you know it better than I do because it's uh, basically part of the business process. It's not something very special from the system. So, two decodes I used so far, right? The one for creation of the uh, inventory count, LI01N, and I've done LI04 to print. What is the next step? We would go to the system and we will count. Now let's imagine we went to the, I mean, we know we don't, not to the system, sorry, we go to the warehouse and we count physically. We populate this, uh, we populate this uh, document and then we go back to the system now. How do we enter the results? There is another T code, LI11N. How do we do it in the system? Let me show you. No, this not, it's not difficult. I think it's more uh, difficult to go and have an idea of what is going on, what are the transactions pending, that really the counting by itself. T code is LE, one, one, N. This is to enter the result of the counting. We have to specify um, the warehouse, the inventory record, recount version, nothing because it's the first time we count. We are not, we are not uh, doing recounting right now. It's the first time we count it. We press enter, and there we go. The system show us for the bin that we selected. Is telling us, listen, in the bin that you selected, you have two materials. This one and this one. Now, did you count? Someone was asking, can I enter only the amounts for the for one of the elements? Yeah, but then you are not you are not completely accounted for for the other material, right? It's pending. Let's say that I went through it, I counted, and I think I have 55 or I don't know 45 or 40 uh, spares, spare parts, right? And for the other material, let's say that we have, mm, I don't know, uh, maybe 15, something like that. Name of the counter is uh, is myself who is counting, so I, I'm putting my initials, okay? If you have any question about this process, it's very well detailed in the user guide. I can show to you the user guide, I will, it will be attached. But listen, it's here, everything is detailed, it's a very good document. If you need a reference, it's there. In the presentation, we are only including like uh, uh, the steps in Asia. Okay, so I have entered for uh, the same bin, I have two materials. So I have entered 40 and I have entered 15, okay? 
Sorry if this is uh, uh, very boring because it's only transaction, but at least I'm showing it in the system. So we enter 40 and 15 and I press enter. So the system is telling me that there are less than there were before. So there's going to be a difference. So watch out, it's telling me, oh, there is a difference. You are saying there are 40, but the system expected to have more. It's telling you, okay, we press enter or we click on the green check. Okay, and then it's telling me, oh, for the other one, for the new supplies, for the other material, there are more than there were before. So it's telling me there were 50% more, so probably there were 10, now there are 15. Okay, we press enter and that's it. Now we have to post. We save this counting. This is what we counting, we save. Sorry, am I going too fast? Uh, do you want me to to insist on something, but I mean, this is, I think it's not very complex, it's basically following the job rate. So the system is telling you that we count it for one, two, four, two. So let me go back to the presentation. We did the inventory count. Now, this is uh, important because if there are systems, I mean, if there are differences, the system will display the, green, the screen with the message below for every line. What do we do now? that there are differences. Shall we clear differences? And the answer is obviously not. You did the counting, you see there are differences, now you have to review them, and then before clearing differences, you don't know if there was a mistake in the counting, so you will need to recount. How do we review the differences? Another code, okay? Everything is here for your reference. LX17. Let me go and review the differences because the person from the warehouse comes to me and say, okay, I put it this, this is what I have. Then we think, oh, but this is not what I expected because in the system I have something else. We go to the system. This is a long story. Huh? I go to the system. Then I do LX. What is the decode? In the presentation we have it LX70. Sorry, I'm not taking questions so far because this is like a story. Then when I I reach the proper point, we okay. I think there is a question, so give me just one second. Yeah. So I in this decode LX17, I can see the differences that have been posted, like from the counting document, right? From the counting and controlling process, we generate an inventory document, and this is going to It'd be useful for us to see what happened. So storage type 001, this is what we were counting, and this, the storage bin is this one, so let's see what happened. This is a report that is useful for us before we clear differences. LX17, write it down if you are not familiar with this, so it will help you to follow the, the logical order. It's telling me that uh, for new spares, there are new uh, there are new that are missing. N new, sorry, there are nine that are missing. Okay, and before we had, well, basically, I don't I don't think it's giving you the previous amount, but it's telling you minus nine, which means that before there were nine more. Okay. Well, for the um, new supplies that I enter a random number as well, it's telling me that there are five more that were not there before. So there are differences. So what do we do if there are differences? Okay, we will have to do a recount before anything, because you don't know if the counting was, was correct. Cyril, uh, is there any comment? Yes, thank you, David. Not really comment per se, but uh, I've been addressing a couple of questions through the chat, you know, uh, provided uh, by uh, our SME, SEGA, I think this case, and Kirill as well. So as you advance, I'm also responding to a couple of questions. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. So I appreciated the, the support that you are doing in the in the background, Cyril, and also Kirill and, and Sega that they are they are helping from from the from the backend. So what? Let me come back to to the process to the end-to-end -end process. So you see what point did we reach? So at the beginning of this slide, ah, here yeah. I said we will create the physical inventory document. 
this we did it already. Then we printed the counting document. This we did it already. Then we're executing the, okay, we, we count it physically. Then we entered inventory count results. And there is difference. So what should we do? We have to recount. We cannot go uh, again directly to clear differences, right? This is something that uh, we, it's, it's from the business point of view and it's very important. So I'm going to do the, the recount. How do we do the recount? Everybody has to know how to do the recount because it's needed. So if differences are found and they are not, uh, we are not sure 100%, they should start a recount rather to post clear differences in warehouse management. So once the count is completed, clear the count respective of whether there are differences or not, but at least the the, the recount will make us, uh, help us uh, to be sure that the reliable information is the one that is coming on the counting. So how to recount? There is a tickle for this. It's a I. Okay, so let me go to the system again. You, what is the T code? LI14. Okay, sorry, I know it's very hard to keep attention uh, for so long, but thank you if you are still following. We, ent we want to start the recount. Okay, please pay attention. This one is not so, let's say, common that you, maybe you haven't done it yet. LI14, we specify the inventory record, and we press enter. And we get a list, the system is telling us. This bin was already counted. Those are the differences that were found in value and in percentage. So there is 18% less plus 50%. It's not telling you the exact number. And then to initiate the recount, you have to select the line if it's not selected and then click on initiate recount. But hold on, once we click on it, we just get a message, recount 01, which is the version of the recount, is the for inventory 1242. So what do we do, what do we do now? Look, if we go to the, to the report that we showed before that was showing the counting information, it will tell me now that there is nothing counted. Why? Because we started the recount. So now we have to go back to the T code to do the counting, the same as we used before. What was the T code? If you remember, you can tell me directly what is the T code to initiate the count? LE01N. So after the recount, uh, the trigger in the recount, which is LI14, we go back to LI01N to initiate the recount. So let me do another recount. I go to the system. It's just to show you that it's not, this is not rocket science, okay? The, what is difficult is to manage the warehouse and it's difficult to manage the inventory, but the steps in the system will not add an additional, let's say, headache. So we enter again the counting. Warehouse is the same. Inventory record is the same because we, this is not a new inventory count document. It's the same one we are doing a recount. And then recount version is one, okay? Is one. I press enter and I get, I get back to the, uh, to the screen to count. I don't even remember how many I counted before, but now I'm going to say 40, I was 40, no? So I'm going to say, oh, I counted again and I have 41 actually. And these ones, I think I said there were 15 or something. So I'm going to say, oh, it was not 15, sorry, it was 14, okay? The name of the counter again is the same. And this is the recount. We are counting again. The system is telling us there is a difference compared to what is stored in the system. And important, do not forget to save because you have the feeling that you already counted because you got some green messages. At the end, you have to click on save. And now the system told us, very good, you completed the, the count. So going back to the presentation, and if there is any question about this 
part of the process, please uh, let me know. So we have completed the creation of the physical inventory, the printing of the count document. We have entered the inventory count results, and we have initiated the recount. Any question about this, uh, Sir? Yeah, that's a good point, and we are going to also mention it in the following slides. So if there is a difference before clear clearing, uh, the difference is it should be within the tolerance. That is going to be 2% or $250, whichever, whichever, uh, whatever is less. We are going to see it in the following slide because this, again, this part of the section is about counting. So right after right, uh, this slide, we will start with clearing different uh, scenarios. Okay, thank you so much. I understand that this is a step-by-step -step process. I'm, I'm showing it only in the system, so you have the opportunity to see it if you haven't seen it. And it's also to, to give you the, the impression that it's true, there are a number of tickles there, but it's quite uh, straightforward. The complication arises when you have the difference and you have to, you have differences. I mean, the, the difficult part as well is getting the storage types, uh, let's say, clear. Then after running this, what do we do if we have differences? So let's go, let's go for it. So this, okay, this one already we mentioned it. Clear dif clearing differences. So from the agenda, just to um, put you in track again, we have seen the now the counting step by step process and the recounting. So now the last part of the agenda is clearing difference. All right, thank you for your patience. And now please, people that are connected to the WebEx that are not really uh, paying much attention or following the screen of the of the session, please I invite you to focus on this part because I think it's important, okay? Thank you. So before clearing differences, this is important because uh, it's not only about finding what is not matching, if you don't act, as I said before, on the warehouse site when it's required, uh, far from solving your issues, you will create another problem. So I was saying during the first part of the session, it's very important if you have transactions in inventory management that are pending on the warehouse site, meaning TRs are pending, TOs are not confirmed, and I tell you I've seen hundreds of TOs not confirmed, or posting changes are not uh, processed, the warehouse site is not ready for counting. If you go and count, of course, it will not match your reality. But it will not match your reality because the system is not uh, properly uh, used, so the transactions are not performed. So if you try to make the system match the reality by using counting and controlling uh, clearing difference functionality, you will create an additional problem because still the transactions in warehouse management are pending. So what do we do? So if the inventory difference, so once you do the, once you process the accounting and controlling document and you enter the information and you see there is a difference and then you see, oh, this is not matching what we have in the system. Why? Because we have transactions pending that are not processed do not clear the difference in warehouse. If the difference is because of transactions not being performed, delete the physical inventory document using transaction li 2 go to warehouse site and confirm TOs, process TRs by creating the TOs, process posting changes. Do not clear in warehouse something that is there like that because of its uh, 
transactions no don't being performed, the transactions are pending. They should not be transactions pending in warehouse management. But still, if the inventory uh, we will see later, if by by mistake you let's say posted the differences in in warehouse. Do not post them in inventory management because it will impact finance. If the difference are there because there are pending transactions in the warehouse management, don't worry. Go, confirm the TOs, process TRs, process TOs for posting changes. And after that, create a new inventory uh, counting document, a physical inventory document, and then count again. Okay? But be prudent before posting difference. Make sure you don't have pending transactions. All right? Is that clear? It's very important. You don't want to have double problem. You want to solve what is pending and then count and then see what is there. Okay? There is a note about deleting or not deleting the inventory document. Okay? If it's already posted, you will not be able to delete it, but you can create a new one. Okay? This is just a note. So how do we clear differences uh, in warehouse? If the discrepancy is confirmed, and this is very important, if it's confirmed that the, there is a discrepancy, but not because there, there are pending transactions, the process has two steps. There is one step in warehouse management, like any other process, and another one in inventory management. But in, normally when you have good receipt, the good receipt is inventory management, and then it goes to warehouse. When is the, uh, the other way around, it's in the counting and controlling. It's done first on the warehouse, and then it goes to inventory. Okay, the T-code is LI20. Now, there is a step here that is extremely, we will discuss it, so okay. So, the T code is LD20, I'm going to show it in the system. Once we post differences, the system will remove the, uh, let's say, the difference from the bin we are counting and will bring the quantity to the storage type 999. It will bring into an interim storage type. Okay, so how do we do it? It's going to be very simple. With this T code, we specify the uh, counting uh, record and we tell to write off. Let me see it in the system. The T code is, sorry, I said LE, no, it's not, it's LI. Huh? Sorry, because I said LE, it's not LE. LI 20. Okay. This is my inventory record. So the document I created uh, to perform the counting is 1242. Okay. What else do you have to say? Mm, the warehouse number, which is this one. And then I press enter. Now the system, if you see my screen, is telling me. Listen, David, you with this with this inventory document number you gave me, it's already counted, it's not cleared. And it's telling you that for this bin, there is a difference of eight elements on the spare parts. Sorry, no, in value. So in percentage, you don't see the number of items. But it's telling you that there is a, a reduction of 16% or inc uh, an increment of 40%. So it's telling me there are differences. Is it confirmed? Do I want to post the differences? Because I've checked and there is nothing pending on the on the TO side. There is nothing pending on the TR side. There is nothing pending on posting chains. Okay, we want to post differences. How do we do it? Open your eyes. It's only two clicks. You select the line, if it's not selected, and you click on write off. And that's it. The system is telling me there was one bin, it's cleared. What, why is only one bin? Because my count was only for one bin. And that's it. It's cleared. And the impact is, I mean, immediately you can see it. If I go to LX02, for example, and I filter by our bin, you will see that now the amounts are the ones I counted. 41 available stock as a spare, 14 as a new supplies. So telephone, 14 telephone satellite and 
41 spare or whatever. Okay. Okay, there is a very good question that we will about the next scenario. Someone is asking, is it better to check if the material, actually thank you Ellie for the question, it's better to check if the material exists in a different bin before clearing differences, maybe what is missing in the bin, can we find it in the bin number? Yeah, very good question Ellie, and this is why, yeah, this is why, uh, of course you're right, and uh, if you, if I go back to my slides, so the question is, before posting differences, maybe there is uh, something is there in a different bin, right? So this is why when we started the, in, in the process here, we are recommending to use the LX02 to identify the bins that have this type of material, because sometimes it may happen that you have it in one, you expect to have it in one bin, but then all of a sudden it's not in this bin, but it's in another one. Okay, so yeah, correct, uh, Ellie. In my scenario, the one that I'm showing in production, yeah, we are, I mean, in training environment, we are assuming that it's not in in different bins. But at the end of the um, the demo, I want to sh cover these two, three scenarios that you are referring to, where you have it in different bins or it's only in one bin, etc. Okay, but it's it's a it's a very good point, actually. So. Uh, what did I do? I was clearing differences in warehouse management. So you see the impact on the system side, on the warehouse, is already done. But now we have a situation. The warehouse is not aligned with the inventory and therefore is not aligned with finance because we have positive differences only in the warehouse. So, what? how should we proceed if this is confirmed? The next step, so you see this, say that my job is done, it's only on the warehouse side. And then we will have to clear differences in inventory management and this step is very dangerous because uh, it impacts finance straight away. So the difference is clear also in inventory management and this step will generate accounting documents as I was saying. And this, please look at my screen. <clears throat> Very important. The ones that are not looking at my screen will not know what I'm referring to. So if you are connected to the web but you don't look at the screen, you're connected for nothing. We are going to run this report to clear difference in inventory management. The T code will not help you that much because we'll let you a couple of uh, inputs that are free for you to enter. The T code is set LI21. So let me go, we are going to do it. Set LI underscore LI21. Warehouse is CO4, storage type. What storage type do you think we're going to enter here? In my case, we were counting one bin that belonged to storage type 001. What do I enter here? I want you to reply on the chat for this decode to post inventory, I mean, differences in inventory. What do I enter on the storage type? Do I enter 001 because I was counting 001? We have to count 999. We have to enter 999, right. Why? Because the previous step, very good, the previous step that was posting a uh, clearing difference in warehouse is bringing the difference to storage type 999. Okay? So now that we are going to do the, we are going to perform the posting the clear of the difference in inventory, we have to enter 999. Please do not clear differences from other interim storage types. We have seen people in production that become very creative and use this decode to clear differences in other storage types. Do not do that. Use this decode to clear only storage type 999. So 999, 
And do we have to end our storage bin? No, we don't. Because now the difference is in 999 is not in our bin anymore. Our bins are already are okay now. So we don't enter anything else. Only 999. As it's written in the slide and it's written in the job. Aid. So let's see how it this works in the in the system. Actually I'm going to give you a trick, a small trick, because if you count it and you have your counting document and when you enter here to clear differences, you have a lot of things to be clear. It will be a bit confusing. So this is a trick, the tip of the day. So in this storage bin, you can enter the counting document, so the physical inventory document that you generated, and then you will only see the differences that you have created by posting in warehouse. It's only just to visualize it easier. Easily. So there you go. The system is telling you. You post it in warehouse to differences. You clear it in warehouse to differences. One for spare, new spares that has eight of difference and another one that is minus four. Do not get confused with the these numbers. This is counting difference between inventory management and uh, warehouse management. And these uh, signs. They are the opposite of what you may expect. Seal, any questions so far about the posting difference in warehouse? Uh, no, no, not a specific question about the posting difference. Other question, uh, I'm, I'm trying to respond to, to, to them, you know, separately. So I think we can proceed for that. So. Okay, thank you. So, as I was saying, very important, storage time 999, and then we got we have that. I think it's written in the next slide. Let me go. Okay, this is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, note. This is only a note. Yeah, remember that the signs are a bit confusing. So, if you see a negative sign, it means that the, the difference, that the stock that you counted is more than the quantity in the system. Okay, so it's like saying in inventory, I don't have so much. If the quantity has no sign, it's because the count is less than the quantity. So basically here at this point, you are only worried about the, the, the differences and, and the counting and recounting was already done. So how do we clear the differences? Let me go back to the presentation. Okay. This is just showing different uh, in the system. You see lo the scrap differences that we already discussed. So here we have to uh, consider two scenarios, and this is related to the question that uh, was coming from from one of the colleagues. Here we have differences in two items. Okay, we have spare parts that are not serialized. And we have new supplies. Uh, this is a telephone, I think, that are equipment and they are serialized, okay? Equipment is serialized, spare parts. Uh, in this case, they are these ones are not serialized. So we, we are not keeping uh, serial numbers for them. So your microphone. So the, um, if the count included non-serialized material, okay? for which there are differences. If this is very important, this is business oriented and it's, there was a couple of questions about that. If the differences for non-serialized materials are within the limit established by the CW operating manual, this is within 2% or or $250 of difference, whichever, whichever is lower, you can, but if it's not within the tolerance, you have to go strictly through the right of uh, process, okay? And then, Kirill, if you want to step in at this point and mention something, please uh, please uh, feel free. Also, there should not be a uh, accumulation of values for the purpose of the clearing discrepancies. Maybe, Kirill, you want to uh, elaborate a bit this point if you are if you are there. Uh, hi, David. Thank you. Yes, thank you. This is uh, this is um, 
how the policy framework defines this process. The differences can be cleared right away by the RD02 if they are within that uh, limit established in the centralized warehouse manual. Uh, and that applies to non-serialized items only. If the items are serialized or if the uh, difference exceeds that limit, then it has to follow the steps uh, as, described, uh, as per the threshold of the delegation of authority. And uh, depending on the value, uh, that would then fall either within the as low value write-offs or may even require attention by the uh, review boards. Okay. Thank you. So in our scenario, and I'm sorry if I'm not going in the training environment, the scenario I, I built, maybe I'm not respecting the, the, CV, the CW, uh, the Central Warehouse Operating Manual, because I put it that uh, there are eight less, so this should go through the uh, regular right of process. But let's imagine that this is within, within the tolerance. So how shall I proceed? This is non-serialized material. I select the line. And I have to go to list and then click on clear online uh, foreground. OK? If I click here, the system tells me automatically, in this case, one quant has been cleared. And I could go to the, to the system and see that the impact that uh, was present in inventory. Okay, so basically the inventory at inventory level we have we have reduced the uh, stock available by uh, yeah by eight eight elements eight items. Did I finish clearing differences? Not because I have still the serialized materials. Okay, there we have the other ones. Let me go back to the presentation. If the count included serialized materials, okay, the physical count difference must always be followed by a right of process ir irrespectively of the value. In my case, I think my example had uh, differences, but it was not less than we expected, but we have some extra cell phones there. Probably that maybe they were assigned, but we, were not, we did not process the return to stock or something. Okay. So just to summarize a bit. So if the items are serialized, physical count of differences must always be followed by the right of action irrespective of the value. Okay, that is because also equipment wise, you have to also identify what are the elements that are missing. If it's for non-serialized, then we have to refer to the centralized warehouse operation manual. And then if it's within the limit, you can, you can post the differences. Otherwise, you have to go through the right. -off. Okay. So one more step, one second. So I was pending this this uh, difference to be posted. In this case, there are four uh, items more than we expected in the in the system. So since this is serialized, once we try to post differences, the system is going to ask to identify to identify the equipment number, the serial number of these elements either the ones that are missing or the ones that uh, appeared in this in this case. No? The process will be the same. Once we select the line and we click on clear online foreground, the system gives us a pop-up message to specify the serial numbers. If we were uh, writing of removing uh, items from, from inventory, it would be the same. We'll have to specify what are the ones that are uh, let's say this uh, disappeared, right? But in this case, I said there are four new ones. So I will, we will physically take, if they appeared there, we will take the uh, serial number from the item and we will write it here. No, since this is only an example, I'm going to generate them automatically. But you will have to take them in a real scenario, you will take them from the, from the physical item. And that's it, the system uh, clear the the quant and now if for example I go to stock overview okay uh, if I go if 
for example to stock overview OT code. Yeah, I could I could specify here the the plant and the storage location and I will see that we have exactly the same in inventory now than we have in uh, right of so we I mean in warehouse. So final final comments. Yeah, it's uh, after we process and we post the differences, we clear the differences. It's a best practice to go and see the status of our count document in in case there was a partial count as someone was asking if I count only some of the materials from the bin then you will have it's pro probably the counting is not the, the, the let's say the physical document is not completely uh, cleared or in this case if we counted some of the materials and we post differences yeah but uh, yeah still we will have to count the rest of the materials anyway so this is the number of the inventory count, one, two, four, four, two. And then we want to show all the statuses and let's see how it is. You see, this is the inventory record I created before and its status is, is clear. I should have checked this before before clearing the second material to see what is was the status, but this is completed and then that's okay. So, um, troubleshooting scenarios, and then we go for the final questions, okay? Because maybe it's, I'm replying already to some of the points. So what situations can we find here? Okay, and pay attention because at the end of the session there is still some pulling questions for you to answer. Okay, we are in the last step of the uh, of the session. I, lo I know it's really long and I appreciate your patience and that you are still listening to me. If you are still listening to me, <laughs> so uh, uh, what to do? Well, just incorrect differences in warehouse management module. So as soon as the inventory count is entered in the system, the warehouse senior user executes the count difference report and performs the corresponding analysis and reconciliation. This is the description of the scenario. So let's say that we have some differences and then we review, and then we realize that some of the differences are related to issues within warehouse management. For example, pending transaction not recorded in the system. This is exactly what we try to avoid by doing the preparation, by checking pending TRs, pending posting changes, and also TOs pending confirmation. But still, let's imagine that we do the counting and there is an issue in the difference between some transactions are pending. Or maybe because as Eli was saying, we were counting uh, only some beans and the other beans were not included in the count. This is what uh, Ellie was pointing out, okay? How do we proceed in these two scenarios? Scenario one, for example, there is a good receipt of 50 uh, items that is posted in inventory management. And this, please pay attention because this is an, a scenario and, and it's very common that you have it in production. So if you have a good receipt that was posted, but the put away TO is not recorded or not confirmed, and then unfortunately, the difference has been cleared in warehouse management. What do we do? Then we will go to a scenario two. So what do we do? There was a counting. Initial stock was zero. Then we go and we count and we have 50. Come on, how can we have 50 of this? And then we realize that we have 50 when we expected zero because the put away transaction was not performed. Oh my God, we already clear differences in warehouse. What do we do? So, the process is, okay, this is again the same explanation, okay, what we are going to do is to finalize the transactions that are pending, how do we amend the issue, this is the same explanation I'm giving, solution, this is what we worry about, where we care about. We have to complete the transactions in warehouse, 
the missing put away, and then create a new physical inventory document. So by performing the transaction, we will have <clears throat> we will have the the new number, we will remove it from interim storage type, and then we will do a new account, and we will clear the differences in warehouse and inventory management. So golden rule, transactions that are performing inventory have to, uh, uh, we have to perform also the ones in warehouse. Okay, MIGO was processed, staging area was, or uh, staging storage type, or interim storage type as, uh, however you want to do it, but the 9902 had the difference in, put away, process, and then we do, we create a new counting and controlling uh, document, a new inventory document, and then we enter the new count. Why can't we delete, typical question, but I want to delete the physical inventory document. You cannot delete it because you already posted the differences. So we are in a scenario one. Okay, look, don't get confused. A scenario one has said difference is clear in warehouse already. If the difference is clear, you cannot delete it. What you can do is to perform the transaction and do a new count. And it's not a recount, it's a new count. Okay? Um, yeah, and then here for your friends, you have the screenshots of how to do the things, but it's nothing, nothing new. Okay? Nothing that is not uh, covered by the standard process. Another scenario, this is what Ellie actually pointed out. Let's imagine that we have in stock 144 elements. Okay, 144 that we know we have in the warehouse. 144. But they are in two different bins. Bin A and bin B. We have 15 bin A. 94 in bin B. But when we go and we count, we only count in bin A. And then we count in bin A and we count only zero. Oh, counting and controlling process told me that instead of 50, there are zero. What do I do? Do And then we post differences and we are reducing from 50 to zero. But if we go now to the other bin, there is where we can find the other 50 stuff because we go to the bin B and instead of 94, there are 144. What happened? The 50 items that we were supposed to have in bin A, they are not in bin A, but they are in bin B. But the amount, the total amount, is matching what we have in inventory. What do we do? So in this case, since there are not pending uh, TRs, there are not pending TOs confirmation, there are not pending posting changes, okay, it's a bit easier uh, to fix. Since there are there are no, so we can you can just uh, amend this at the at the level of um, the inventory. Okay, uh, sorry, at the level of the accounting. Because they are not, if there are missing transactions, of course you have to post them. What was missing there was a, probably there was an internal movement to put them together in one bin, but it was missing the TO from bin to bin. Okay, but in this case. It's enough if you create a new inventory document considering all the bins that have the material and then enter entering the count, okay? And then clearing the warehouse. In this case, there will not be a, an impact if they belong to the same storage location. In a, and there will not be an impact in, in, a, in inventory, I think. Uh, 
So this is the step-by-step -step process. And those are the two scenarios that we were considering. And now, if you have any other question, otherwise we are serial. I'm sure there are questions, so maybe we have two more minutes. No, uh, <laughs> no the, 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 the question, a couple of pending questions. As I said, you know, we are being trying to respond to a couple of questions and share it with other, you know, based on clarification from, um, you know, Kirill and, and Sega years and there. So this left off with um, a no question regarding the posting difference, but you still have a couple of questions, you know, um, regarding, you know, the Bing locations and, and storage, you know, it has more thing to do with counting and controlling, like is it acceptable to practice the use of LT01 to relocate customer well between different bin locations? Yeah, that, there was a question about uh, bin to bin, uh, let's say transfer, right? This is uh, something that is not strictly related to counting and controlling. Maybe I can show the little bit. Well, give me one second if I have it here. So, So it's about stock transfer bin uh, to bin from from a list. Okay, from bin to bin. Yeah, maybe if you if you have the person that was asking that, we can send them uh, the uh, the reference because it's a bit out of the scope. But anyway, it's in the user guide as you can see. On second, I'm showing right now the user guide. This should be all these questions. You can find them in the user guide that is uh, in Umoja and. Uh, you have here in the second page, uh, in the first page, you have stock transfer bin to bin and also TOs. So you have here the all the pros. Okay, that that that's okay. Yeah, and the question for the inventory adjustment, uh, we went through the. I don't know if you if uh, Sega there or Kill uh, has any comment about. The recent call for inventory adjustment. I did. I went through the process, and then maybe it was too far. I went too fast, but I did not see uh, anything. Let me go to the presentation to see. If we have the slide there. Now, there is a question, Creel and Sega, about the inventory adjustment recent code. Where to enter it? But to be honest with you, since this is not mandatory from the system. I'm not sure where it has to be uh, entered. So I don't know if you can um, bring some light to this. Uh, David, uh, do you hear me? Yes, yes, please. Um, it's Kirill. So just to say that this came from a colleague in Brindisi, from Paul, um, and um, it refers to the centralized warehousing manual, where there oh, okay. is such a requirement that all adjustment must have a reason code of the inventory adjustment submitted in the Omoja remarks column. So perhaps um, I, I think we would need to look at the warehousing manual and then see what, what this is about. Okay, okay. Thank we'll you. Because respond in, after the session. Yeah, okay, thank you. Because in the system, having, when once I was going through, I, I didn't see, uh, let's say, the, the space for, for that. So okay, thank you, but it's a very good, very good question that we will take it offline. Okay, and then for the rest of the question, we will thank you, Gil, so much, and Sega, and I know Rafael may be listening to us from a different uh, connection from another colleague. Thank you so much, all of you, for your attendance and for joining. I know it was a long session, but I appreciate your your efforts. We will get uh, take a second look to the questions that remain unanswered, and uh, we will try to to address them. I'm going to send the materials, uh, the presentation we used uh, right away. The recording will be shared maybe tomorrow, because we need to post-produce a bit. And then we'll also take a look to the questions and we will attach also job aids and any other reference material. Thank you so, so much. It's a pleasure to try to help uh, with this process and also to see your name. Thank you for your patience, for your questions, for your clarifications and uh, for anything else. We are here to help. Cyril. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, David. Uh, long training, I think, but I, I hope you found it very useful. A particular thanks, you know, to, to Kirill, you know, for the support as well as uh, Sega. 
as I said, you know, she was also responding to the background. That's why I was sharing a couple of answers and clarification. Those questions that were not uh, answered, you know, I said, you know, you will put them in the parking lot, you will respond to all of them and share it with you, you know, along with uh, the recording as they measured. So thank you very much for attending. Thank you so much, and sorry if it's uh, late on your missions. We tried to put a, a time uh, to choose a time that was uh, allowing Kirill and also the the guys from the other side to to attend because they they can contribute a lot with their with their wisdom. Thank you, and see you see you soon. Hopefully, take care.